Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about what governance is and what we're talking about because that this is a common debate online and a lot of people want to talk about it, but they don't really understand or they, they have an idea, but they don't really know what, uh, what it refers to and so on. So I, I'll try to make that clear in this video. So first of all, governance is is what it sounds like. It's a it's a, it's a government or some way to uh, you know direct things. Um, and this is this has been a topic that's been in Bitcoin for the last five years or so. What is the governance model for Bitcoin? Um, and uh, for the most part, Bitcoin works on a governance model that's uh, best described as anarcho-capitalistic. Um, you know, everyone does their own thing. Uh, there's no central government of any kind um, and they and people do what they want more or less and uh, you know there's no person and uh, that that goes hey we need this feature therefore let's go get people to work on it and let's dictate on from high that that this is what's going to happen that's not how Bitcoin governance works uh, it's more anarcho capitalistic uh, you know people do what they want and if they have the inclination, then they will um, they will make it happen. Now, if you are not a part, uh, if if you are, you know, other coins or other systems have a very different governance model, and this is one of the big differences between Bitcoin and something else, uh, like say Litecoin or Ripple or something like that. All of them have a governance process. They have foundations. They have uh, you know, a creator, and they get to dictate what's going on. So Charlie Lee gets to dictate what's going on for Litecoin to a large degree. I mean, he, he doesn't control it, control it, but he has a significant amount of influence, largely because he created it. And that is a very authoritative voice that you get to have if you are a, um, if you are a creator of a coin. Uh, same thing with Vitalik. Vitalik actually has a lot more say in, in, um, and Ethereum, uh, he he more or less decided, uh, okay, we are going to bail out these people, and uh, and that's their governance model. Um, my personal feeling is that if you have a centralized governance model, that it is a weakness for the coin and not a strength. If you have a governance model, then people are going to try to hack at that governance model. They're going to try to do things to influence it in a way that benefits them. This is what businesses do for government every single time. Um, so, you know, for example, if you are a drug manufacturer, you are trying, you're um, going to try to get laws passed that subsidize your stuff. This is what Medicare Part D was, uh, you know, back, uh, back in 2006 that got passed, is that uh, drugs were more or less subsidized by Medicare, right? Uh, and uh, if you are a corn farmer or a big, big agricultural company, then you're going to um, try to get corn subsidies and utilize those products or make, make those products so cheap that people will buy your stuff. Um, you know, that, that's uh, why you have high fructose corn syrup, right? Uh, those tend to, tend to corrupt and they don't let the market play out, whereas an anarcho-capitalistic model um, tends to let everyone do whatever they want and let the market decide. That's, that's how the Bitcoin governance model works. Um, and I believe that's to be the best model because it, it, it helps a lot of people uh, to continue to develop um, things that are vetted by the government, uh, not by the government, but by the people. And that's that's what the Bitcoin governance model is. So when a lot of people say that the that Bitcoin's governance model is broken, they just mean that there's no central uh, party that gets to dictate where, what, it, what it is. Stuff like, you know, we want a product roadmap. That's something that you can do in a centralized con context. But in a decentralized context, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Like you can't have a product roadmap. I mean, there, there's maybe somebody working on a particular feature, but there's no guarantee that that gets in or, uh, or that people will want it or that the market will want it and so on because this is a voluntary system. Whereas with a product roadmap, it's pretty much shoved down your throat. If Facebook wants to change their product roadmap so that, uh, you know, 
you know, you, you have to look at ads before you go on their platform or something like that. That's something that they can do because they are, they have a centralized governance system. Bitcoin does not have that, so they, there, there's no way to force anything. Uh, but, it, you know, Ethereum, on the other hand, they can, they can change to proof of stake, screw over a bunch of miners, or they can, uh, you know, change the system to um, inflate more or less or whatever they want to do. They, that, that is completely within the realm of possibility because they have a centralized governance system. Uh, now, there, that's not to say that centralized governance isn't all, all like, bad or anything. Uh, certainly, you know, Ethereum has benefited from a centralized marketing platform that they have. Um, and this is why ICOs are popular. And that this is what, uh, you know, Tezos and um, a lot of these other ICO platforms are trying to do is, you know, utilize the same model that Ethereum did to get it to be popular. But long term, this is not sustainable. This, the, those coins are not sound money because when you have centralized governance, well, for money, that doesn't work very well. For certain products, it, it works very well, right? Like you're, you're able to iterate and things like that. But for sound money, you need it to be immutable. So um, this is why Bitcoin has the governance that it does. And it doesn't, it, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a feature, not a bug. Hopefully that helps you. And this song is done.